Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. We're up to part three of this week's episode of the show. We're diving even deeper into our conversation with this week's guest. Let's continue exploring their inspiring journey. If you've missed part one and two, definitely go back and catch up. Also, if you're not subscribing, please, please subscribe. Enjoy the rest. <laughs> you, how are you with your friends? If you ever see anybody upset at school, what do you do? Is there a time that you've ever gone and and shown some compassion. I'm sure there is. I, I doubt it very much that the, this would be a no. But have you ever? What can you can you remember an example where you might have shown some compassion at school? Well, I'm not going to point fingers or say names because I know that's kind of of course. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird for people. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, sometimes, um, especially at recess. Somebody will be like sitting on the bench. They're kind of pouty, kind of just sitting like this, kind of not really feeling the beat. And I'll walk up to them and I'll sit next to them and I can start a conversation with them. And if they tell me to leave them alone, then I respect that. But if they need a friend, then I can be there and I can ask them what's wrong and how I can help. Amazing. Oh, I love this. Absolutely love this. Sorry, did your mum say something then? What did you What did you do when you saw some work in Vine Street? So today, this is a good example. Actually, we were inside, oh, and and there was this girl walking by, and she seemed kind of sad, and so I looked at her and I smiled and I waved, kind of like a hi you don't have to wave back but i'm here if you need me kind of wave and she looked at me and she smiled and she kept going oh and that so kind could of... be a huge ripple effect for the day couldn't it for her because if she was sad we don't know what's going on in people's lives do we and that smile and that wave alone and her smiling back might have lifted her spirits for the next few hours or the whole day, which could have changed her, her old route for the day. Because you never know, she could have been walking down a, a dark, sad street in her mind. And then you smiled and you lifted it up a lot. Does, you know what I mean? Kind of Do like you... how... No, go on, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go. Okay. Um... <laughs> So the tiniest thing can have the biggest effect. Kind of like there are bad things too that can have that. Like a frown comparing to a snowball can cause an entire just horrible day and compared to an avalanche. But I'm trying to think of a good one. <laughs> but a tiny little smile compared to a little ray of sunshine can lift somebody's spirits for so long compared to can take away a storm. Oh, I completely agree. You've a great use of ad, um, adjectives there as well. You, uh, and metaphors. Oh my word, my word. There, I, I couldn't do it as good as you. Do you do you live your life like this every day? Whether it's at school, whether it's at home with your mum, when you're really comfortable. I'm sure you have moments with your mum, right, and little arguments. Like, no, mum, I'm not doing that. Like, you can't be this like this the whole time, can you, Emily? No, no, <laughs> no. Most of the time. <laughs> Most I'm, of the I'm glad time, you're human but... then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have I have my days. Oh, I'm <laughs> I'm so glad you said it like that because that's just you being real and that's what's really important, isn't it? At school you must have your days as well, but do you do you get up every morning and kind of live your life like this even you know when you're out in public and being at school as well? Do you is that how you are at school? I try to be. Yeah. I'm I'm glad Sometimes... you didn't say yes. I'm, I'm really glad yeah. you didn't say yes then, you know. Most people would just expect you to say yes, I think. And I'm so glad you didn't say yes. You just said, I try to be. And that's okay if you're not sometimes because, you know, we have some survival emotions, don't we? And, and we've we've got to be able to sit in our uh, undesired emotions sometimes. 
All right. And we have moments too, even though we're trying to help the world or save the world or prevent the world going into darkness, you will, it will happen to us as well. Right. You in this scenario, would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Like beautiful. It, it, where did this all come from? How did you be you though? Because you've got so much around you and you're doing so much. Where, where do you think this all came from? I guess I kind of at school, at home with all the stuff going on, it's been really hard lately. And I try to be a happy person, but sometimes I need a distraction because I'm just having a really poopy day. <laughs> and can I ask can I ask um, what kind of poopy days you've had? Well, sometimes I would get into an argument with my parents. And since they're divorced, um, I can't really go talk to the other parent. So that's kind of hard. Yeah. And my brother's four, so I can't talk to him. Because he's just, just, just going to say, hmm, interesting. Can you play with me? <sighs> that's cute, though. Yeah. And he will be there to talk to you one day when he's a little bit older because he's got you as an older sister, right? And what a better older sister to have to inspire him and to be a great person. But he'll still have his moment because boys will be boys and will annoy you big time. Um, but, I, you know, and I, I see that with my son and my daughter. My daughter looks tries to look after him and she's only three, but he's eight. So yeah. he just looks at her as this annoying little girl. Um, <laughs> and you, you might look at your brother like that, but um, yeah, he, he's got an awesome sister. So if he's ever feeling a bit down, he's got the best sister to have. But that's really smart and, 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 and mature of you to say and be open. I, I know your mum is listening, but forget that she's there for a moment. Do you, <laughs> do you talk to your mum? Do you, do you open up to her and say, this is how I'm feeling? Because I, I, if I know your mum, I think she would sit and hold space for you. But outside of her holding space for you because sometimes she might need space being held for her do you ever do you open up to your mum and tell her how you're feeling yeah I actually mom my mom is like the person that most most probably in this universe I open up to you oh good and I'm glad you feel safe to do so what well, um have you had any poopy days recently outside of um you know your family stuff is there any other poopy days at school friends is there anything that goes that messes with your mind a little bit at school do you think well right now it's summer but oh, of course yeah yeah but um but so i don't really have to worry about school no. but um lately i've been feeling kind of sad because I feel like um, some of my friends that I've known for a really long time, like since I was four or five, are like, we're kind of drifting apart, not talking as much, just like going our separate ways. Why do you think that? Um, they seem to be finding new friends that they want to hang out with more. Mm -hmm. Like, um... Like, I'll ask my friend, oh, do you want to do this day? And they'll be like, I'm hanging out with a friend. Oh, this day? Hanging out with a friend. This day? I'm gone on a trip. And then I'm gone for the rest of the month. So, yeah, kind of drifting apart with my friends. How, how do you I handle have... that then? Oh, sorry. I think I think there was a delay there. Sorry, Emily. What what did you say then? Sorry, honey. Um, But I can also, the bright side on that is... Um, sometimes in life, people drift apart, but if you truly love them, if they're actually like your best friend, then you never really leave them. You'll always come back to them and you'll always have a space and they'll always be that person in that way that you can talk to no matter what happens. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I, um... Uh, a little bit about myself. I live in Australia and I moved to the other side of the world away from my friends and family. Um, I ha you know, I have my close family here, of course, but my r other parts of the family are all in England. We we're here on our own. And I miss my friends dearly because I moved here at 28. So I was already 
very well embedded with my friends growing up through playing basketball and connecting every day and hanging out every day, as, especially as a young adult. And um, it's weird because I make contact with them, and but I have to understand they have a life too, right? And they're carrying on with their life and they've got children, but I miss them. And sometimes I feel sad that we don't communicate as much as one we used to or two as a, much as I like to. But it is, you're right, on that point, when I go home, and I sit in the room with them and we talk in their house, it's like we never left. It was like we never were apart. So you're absolutely spot on. If you can understand that at 10 years old, it took me into my mid-30s to understand that. But if you can understand that at 10 years old, you're going to have a very, very safe mindset growing up, and that's that's absolutely phenomenal. But back to you, though. How, you Well, how do you handle that, those moments when you don't get that response that you want? You've got a great mindset, but how do you physically handle it? What, what do you do with your day when you don't get the answer that you were hoping for? Well, one of the hardest things ever that you will ever hear is a no, because yeah. your body works up all this hope and sometimes it can be the biggest answer of your life and your heart is pounding and for a five-year-old that might be hanging out with your friends at the park but um when you get the answer no you instantly turn to how can I make them more upset so that they'll just do what I want and when you do that it just makes things worse so my mind turns to, wow, that was kind of ups upsetting, but how can I make it so that I can accept this no graciously and understand it better? Huh. My word. I think the adults will be able to take this advice from you big time. Oh, my Lord. I, I was worried about asking you that question. I, I need to ask you some harder questions, I think. <laughs> that was a great answer. Oh, my Lord. I'm blown away. Um, well. You're leading your own way very, very well. And we've we've obviously, we've discussed some personal aspects, which I didn't think we were going to go down, if I'm honest, but it was amazing and beautiful. So I'm so glad we did. We've done your books. You mentioned before about creating a, uh, a oh, I've got an ant walking across my paper. That's weird. Um, in my house. That's gross. Oh, don't feel uh, bad. I had an ant crawling on my leg yesterday. <laughs> But that's, I've never seen an ant in my office, in my studio before. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Um, that just put me off. You, you're creating, <laughs> um, you said something for the animals. You're creating a, a, a sanctuary. Was it the word sanctuary? What, talk to us a little bit about that. Wildlife preserve. Preserve, and, sorry, yes. Yeah. Um, this is the donations to the happy place. Um, <laughs> On your website. Yeah, shout out to Miri, my stepsister who actually made the name for it and um talk about that a little more they may not yeah. have heard about mm. what it is and, so and why this is a donation to a wildlife preserve that we're making and it's specifically not like tundra or rainforest desert because those places are really um already quite um, a popular place to see a lot of animals. So the worst part right now of the world is the forest because people are destroying it, cutting wood, taking streams, making dams. Um, even this sounds bad, but some people might, might be camping and they'll find a beaver dam next to the river and they'll start taking sticks from it to try to make a fire. Um, yeah. But people are slowly destroying these beautiful forests that we have, that God has created for us to enjoy. And these forests are something that we have to work very hard to save. Because honestly, how are we going to breathe? How are the How is everything going to survive without the forest and things in it like people hunt people hunt for carpets which we don't really need because we can already make carpets out of wool and or and making carpets out of um out of 
sheep cotton doesn't hurt the sheep, and it doesn't hurt us, and it doesn't really hurt anything, because you can reuse that carpet to make something new. But when you kill a, let's say, a bear, and you take the carpet and you just leave the corpse out there to just rot, what's the cause? I mean, no, may, maybe nothing's going to find that, and it'll just be there. Yeah, I know. I've never thought about it like that before. So your your plan is to do a, an animal preserve to put keep animals safe there. Is that right? And it will be completely cut off to any human beings, so, so you, that yeah, cool. so that um we can keep this land lush and healthy for the animals here to grow and live a healthy life with their Amazing. families. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.